Hello, in this video I will show you how to blend together a sky exposure with a ground shot if you are photographing nightscapes on a star tracker and even if you have a very uneven and jagged edges at the horizon like a tree line for instance on this recent photo I took. Pretty cool, huh? So let me show you how it's done. Alright, so we are here in Lightroom and there I have two exposures. This is the sky exposure, as you can see if I crank up the dehaze, you can clearly see the Milky Way showing up here. And right at the bottom I have a blurry ground, because I was using a tracker, I was tracking the sky, this is a 2 minutes exposure, and that's why the ground is blurry here. And on this second exposure, you can see that the ground is sharp, I have tilted down the camera a little bit in order to cover my blurry horizon here on this image. And then of course the sky is blurry, you can clearly see the star trails because at 3 minutes for this exposure, even with 24mm, the star trails are very prominent. So we will be blending this image with this one. Let's back up this adjustment and let's open both images in Photoshop. So select both, right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Here in Photoshop I have the ground shot on top of the sky shot, so if I toggle this off, you can see the sky here, and if I toggle this on, you can see the ground, and the ground will cover up nicely the blurry part of the horizon on this image. So how can you actually blend those together? Well, because of how uneven the tree line here is at the horizon, we cannot use traditional masking techniques like a quick selection or a magic wand tool, but instead we need to resort to something called luminosity masking. And luminosity masking is basically a masking, so like in Photoshop, every mask is revealing or concealing some part of the layer, and the luminosity part in the name is derived from the fact that we are taking the actual image, the actual pixel data, the actual brightness levels of the image in order to create a mask. And the most simple luminosity mask is just a black and white representation of your image and whatever is white will be revealed, whatever is completely black will be completely concealed and whatever is in the middle between black and white will be partially revealed because the mask doesn't need to be completely black or completely white and can be any shade of grey and the brighter it is, the more it will be revealed by the mask if you stack two layers together in Photoshop. And because the native support for luminosity masking in Photoshop is not exactly great, we are going to be using a plugin called Lumenzia. And this is an excellent plugin, I definitely recommend you check it out. I will put some links down below in the description if you want to check it out. It's not a free plugin, there is a fixed price which you can pay and basically use it for life. And this is an excellent plugin, like I said, very powerful, I can highly recommend you check it out, but if you are sure that you don't want to spend even a dime on any additional plugins, by the end of this video I will actually show you how to pull off the stuff that I will be showing here with Lumenzia without losing Lumenzia, but it is very cumbersome and that is why I will leave it to the end of the video. So let's start by using Lumenzia. So right here we have the panel of Lumenzia and what we will be doing is we will be selecting certain parts of the image. We want to have the foreground here, the trees selected and the sky deselected. So we will be targeting the dark tones. So if I target the most dark tones, D6, basically this button means that we are selecting everything from pure black up until this point in brightness. Like the whole width of this panel represents basically from 0% to 100% brightness. So we are selecting from 0% brightness only this tiny fraction of the tones and we can see in the preview that we don't even have a full selection of the ground here. We have a partial selection of the ground and we don't select anything in the sky because the sky is brighter. So we need to broaden the mask. So let's try D5 which is a little bit wider and thus it will select more of the tonal range. We can see that the foreground is brighter but we start to select some portions in these corners of the sky and we don't want to select any sky. Ideally, our luminosity mask would be completely black in the sky and completely white in the foreground. So we need to somehow create more separation in tonal range between the sky and the ground. And the best way to do it is to actually go back to Lightroom, create a copy of our image and then use the tools available in Lightroom to create more separation between the sky and the ground. So let's do that. Alright, so we are back in Lightroom and this is our ground shot. So let's make a copy, right click and create virtual copy. And right on this copy we can actually reset my preliminary adjustments because I have corrected white balance and things like this. So let's reset. 
And as you can see, the image is very dark and very blue. The reason why is it so blue is because I was using an astronomic CLS filter to cut down light pollution when I was photographing it. And if you want to learn about astronomic CLS filters, I can direct you to the playlist that I have right here when I explain all the quirks and all the benefits and basically pros and cons of using these filters. But that's why the image is so blue, but we will actually use the fact that the sky is blue to our advantage. Let's see how we can do that. So we can increase the overall exposure. We can crank up the contrast because we want to have as much contrast as possible. Also, we can drop some blacks to make it even more black. And then we want to brighten the sky. And the best way to brighten the sky is to actually go to the HSL tab and right here to luminance. And we are going to crank up the luminance. So just like that, we are brightening the sky. We can make it very extreme because we want as much separation as possible. Also, it's a good idea to get rid of this vignetting because this vignetting will actually make problems with our mask right here on the edges of the image. So we go all the way down and enable profile corrections. Right here, I want to keep the vignetting correction, but I actually want to turn off the distortion correction because I want to have my original distortion of the lens in my image. And we will be using this version of the image to create the luminosity mask and then apply this mask to our original image. And that's why it's important that the distortion correction between those two layers is exactly the same because we want the pixels to be matching. Also, what I did here is I cranked up all the way the noise reduction because I don't want to have the noise pattern visible in my mask. So I just crank it up all the way. And this image, of course, looks very hideous. But like I said, it will only be used for the purpose of creating the mask. So let me actually show you the version of this image that I processed before. So this is the image right here. As you can see, it's even more bright here and the separation between the sky and the ground is very distinct. So in order to send this to Photoshop, you can just right click edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop. This opens the image as a separate document. As you can see, we have the previous document here and this is the separate document. So if I want to bring this layer onto this document, all I have to do is just right click, duplicate, then select my other document. Okay. And right now I can close this, don't save. And right here, I have my layer here. Let's call it throw away. And we will be creating a luminosity mask based on this layer and then applying it to this layer right here. So let's try D5. As you can see, we have a way better selection right now and we are not selecting any sky as previously. Maybe D4, a little bit better, D3. Right now we can see that we start to select a little bit of the sky. So let's back up to D4. And right here in Lumenzia, we can use the levels adjustment to actually create even more contrast in our preview. So by dragging this slider to the left, we are making the white areas even more white. So let's bring it all the way here. As you can see, it is becoming more and more white. Now let's bring this to the right and this will crush the blacks. So we can bring it in somewhere here. And as you can see, the selection is pretty good. Everything in the trees is selected and everything in the sky is deselected because it's black. Also, if you are wondering how this luminosity mask is actually created, that it targets this specific range of tones and not the other, then it's pretty much all about this curves adjustment. And if you take a look at this and you don't really understand what's going on, then definitely check out my other video where I explain all about the curves adjustment in Photoshop, how it actually works, what's the math behind it, and how to interpret certain shapes of curves. I can definitely recommend you watch that video if you haven't already. If we apply this as a mask, so let's just do that. So select the layer that you want to apply the mask to. In this case, it is our ground layer. Then go to Lumenzia and click on the mask button. And here is how the magic happens. We can disable our throwaway layer. And as you can see, the blend is pretty much perfect. I can go here and apply some curves adjustment to this layer in order to create more contrast in the Milky Way. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. We can process the sky separately because this adjustment, this curves adjustment doesn't touch our ground. And that way we can further process our image. And as you can see, the tree line looks beautiful from our ground shot. And that is basically how it's done for this simple case. And the reason why this case I call a simple one is because it was sufficient to use a single luminosity mask to create a perfect selection of what we actually wanted to select and what we wanted to deselect. 
but sometimes it is not as easy. Sometimes a single luminosity mask is not enough to target the entire range, the entire length of the horizon that you want to mask out. Maybe you have a bright building or maybe like a city in the distance in one side of the image and you need to create separate luminosity masks in order to target, for instance, the left side of the horizon and the right side of the horizon. So let me actually show you how you can do that using Lumencia as well. All right, so let's delete this mask. And let's enable this layer again. You can leave the curves in, it doesn't matter. And I want to show you how we can use multiple luminosity masks in order to create a perfect selection in your final image. So basically what we want to do, let's disable it for now, and let's add a blank mask. The mask is fully white, which means that it reveals everything from this shot, both the sky, which is blurry, and the ground that we want to keep that is sharp. And right here, if this mask is selected, I can take the brush tool, so I can just hit B, D for the default color set, and X to toggle, so that my foreground color is black. Then make it a little bit bigger. And if I paint here on the mask, you can see that I am hiding this layer, this portion where I painted, and I'm revealing the stuff that is underneath, which is my good sky exposure. And if I paint here on the edge, obviously I am painting away everything. So let's back it up because I don't want that. But let's take a look what happens if I have an active selection. So let's go to a lasso tool and let's make a rough selection, just like that. Then let's activate the brush tool again. And right now, if I paint, I can only paint inside the selection. So the selection is sort of protecting the stuff that is not selected from being painted on. And we can use that to our advantage because we can create a luminosity mask and load it as a selection and then paint in black on our mask through that selection so that the stuff that we don't want to be painted over is sort of protected by this selection. Then we can deselect, we can create another selection and work on another portion of our edge that we want to mask out. So let me show you how to do that. So let's back up again. And right now we have this mask here and we are going to be creating a luminosity mask. So let's enable that again. And right now we want to actually select the sky and we want to have the trees deselected because we will be painting black. So we want to protect the trees and we want to paint away the sky. So we already know that the D4 worked great in order to select the ground and deselect the sky. So we can just hit the knot to sort of negate the selection and select the knot D4. That way we have a good selection in the sky and a good separation between the sky and the ground again. So we can tweak this around further by using the levels. So let's do like the same kind of thing we did before. And right now, as you can see, we have the sky selected, which is white and the ground is black. And right here, we are not going to be loading this as a mask, but as a selection instead. So let's go back to Lumenzia. And right here, instead of clicking the mask button, we are going to hit the cell button, which means select. So let's hit this. And right now we have an active selection. There are no marching ants because Lumenzia actually by default hide the marching ants, but we can show them by going to view and extras. And as you can see, the marching ants are right here on the edge. And that means that the selection is active. Let's actually hide them because they don't do much here. You can also judge that by seeing the cell button lightening up in the green color in the Lumenzia UI right here. And that's how you know that the selection is active. So let's actually disable that. We have the active selection still. Let's click on the mask. It is important that we are painting on the mask and not on the actual layer here on the image. So the mask is selected. We have the brush. We have the black active. We can zoom in. And we can just start painting. As you can see, we are painting away and the trees are protected and the sky is being painted off. So that's how you can paint away the stuff that you don't want in your image and that way create a final blend. Right here, I don't need to use another selection because actually this selection works perfectly for the entire image, like I said before. But at any point, you can just deselect, create another luminosity selection, load it as a selection and paint over a next portion of the edge on your horizon. And that's basically how it's done. And now, as I promised, let me actually show you how we can do all of that without using Lumenzia. So let's delete this mask and let's add a new blank mask like this. Let's enable that again. And right now, in order to create a selection using luminosity, 
we can go to select and color range and right here we can sort of create luminosity selections but as you can see it's not very broad and it's not very precise you can dial down the fuzziness in order to be more precise and crank up the range in order to cover more of the image for instance and if i probe here in the sky you can see that the selection is not very good so maybe I can select the trees. Okay, this looks a little bit better, but we want to be painting away the trees. So we need to actually inverse the selection, but let's try that so we can hit OK. This will select this portion of our horizon. Now we can go to select and actually inverse. So right now we have this portion of the sky selected and right here we can select the mask. Again, brush tool, black color. And we can start to paint away. Of course, we want to paint away this, so we can disable that. And now paint on the mask just like that. And as you can see, if I then deselect, then these trees were protected from this layer. And you need to do it over and over again for every portion of the horizon, which is pretty cumbersome, like I said. So it's definitely better to use something like Lumensium. Also, after you're done with this video, definitely check out my other video when I use Lumenzia to remove light pollution in my Milky Way nightscapes in a very clever way. Link to it will be in the upper right corner of this video right now and also in the description if you want to check it out later. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please make sure to leave it a thumbs up down below. And also, if you have any questions, if any part of the video was confusing to you, Leave a comment down below, don't hesitate, I answer every single comment that I have on YouTube. Also check out other videos I have on my channel, I already have a bunch of astrophotography related tutorials and I also have a bunch of other tutorials related to things you can do with your camera like filmmaking, photography in general, post-processing, Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, etc. This is everything I cover on my channel and I post new videos pretty much every single week so consider subscribing to the channel if you don't want to miss out on those videos. But that's it for now, have a good day, see you next time and bye bye!